up guys, Alec on Carrie here. Today, I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. Something I've known for quite some time now, but due to myopic pursuits, neglected for several years. Recently, however, I've once again reaffirmed this truth for myself more steadfastly than ever. See, I know what the path to true strength is. Now, it's a difficult path to navigate, and I can't make the trek for you, but I can show you the way. It's not lying underneath a heavy bench press or holding an 800-pound micro cop range of motion rack pull in your hands. No, it's much more refined than that. It's both grace and power. It's finesse and aggression. It's violent chaos peppered with complete control, all wrapped in a blanket of total body brutality. The group of exercises I'm alluding to here are what are known as dynamic pulls. And these are the missing ingredient from your average strength training's routine. Now, when I say dynamic pulls, I'm not simply referring to deadlifts done fast. No, that isn't gonna do it. In fact, as far as I can tell, that doesn't really seem to do much of anything at all. What I'm referring to is variations of the Olympic lifts, the key feature of which is the violent and maximal simultaneous extension of the hips and knees. See, a speed deadlift is pulled fast because you choose to pull it fast. An Olympic lift is pulled fast because you have to pull it fast. That's an important distinction. If you're watching this channel, you guys are already doing your squats, so I'm not going to harp on that. But many of you are probably skimping on your dynamic pulls. And that's a shame because the complementary effect these two categories of exercises have on each other is nothing short of astounding. They really do feed off of each other in a very unique and beneficial way. Think of it as maximizing your strength potential. The squat builds the base and the dynamic pulls fill it out. If you skip this second step, as far as I'm concerned, you're an incomplete athlete and an incomplete lifter. This is certainly a personal opinion, but I've always felt that football players in the speed positions kind of represent the pinnacle of athleticism and physicality, the perfect blend of strength, speed, power, and agility. In the training of no other non-barbell sport do they emphasize the combination of squats and power cleans as much as they do in football. So is it any coincidence that these athletes who for many, many years focus a great deal of their intensity and energy on getting a stronger and more powerful dynamic pull are among the strongest, most well-rounded and physically formidable people on the planet? I believe the answer is no. Sure, there is some selection going on based on natural physical characteristics, as there is with any sport, but that doesn't negate the validity of the training and its potential widespread applicability. And that's the thing. Lots of athletes besides football players run and jump, and as evidenced by the recent clip of LeBron James squatting, some of them even strength train as well. But they still don't exhibit the total body strength and power demonstrated by your average NFL recruit. Consider that this past year at the NBA Combine, the average vertical jump of the top 20 guards was 32.1 inches. Compare that to the NFL Combine, where the average vertical jump of the top 20 wideouts and defensive backs was 36.4 inches. These are men of roughly the same size, with roughly the same genetic predispositions, whose sporting endeavors require many similar physical attributes. And yet, even though basketball is a sport that requires its participants to perform dozens of jumps every single game, in the most remedial test of strength and power in existence, the football players wipe the floor with the basketball players. I contend that the main difference responsible for this disparity is the football players' heavy, heavy emphasis on dynamic pulling in their training. An emphasis which ultimately puts them on another plane of existence in terms of total body strength and power compared to athletes in most other sports. See, part of the magic of these dynamic pulls, aside from their inherent synergistic effect when combined with squatting and other traditional methods of strength training, is the frequency that you can perform them at a high level. Every seasoned strength trainee knows that frequent heavy deadlifting is the fastest way to beat yourself into oblivion. Yet, these dynamic pulls fall on the complete opposite end of the spectrum in that not only are they very easy to recover from to begin with, but the more you do them, the less taxing they become, to the point of them being nearly a non-stressor, allowing you to accrue 
hordes of high quality, high power, nervous system priming repetitions on a daily or near daily basis. And as you accrue more and more volume, you'll notice that the movements as well as the muscle activation they incite begin to feel more and more natural and fluid to the point of becoming almost effortless. And with this fluidity and effortlessness comes the ability to tap into your nervous system more readily. You'll find that it doesn't take nearly as much effort to get your body going and performing at a high level. You become more nimble and lighter on your feet. Your first step becomes quicker and sharper and your body morphs into something more resembling a brick wall. With your nervous system fully primed, everything you do now becomes more beneficial because you can tap into muscle fibers that you didn't even know existed. Your body is like a coiled spring, just waiting to be unleashed at a moment's notice. So I don't know about you guys, but I know the path I want to go down and this is it. This is the path to true strength. The only question that remains is, do you possess the fortitude to travel it? Anyway, that's all I got for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope I've convinced at least a few of you to incorporate some more dynamic pulling into your training routine. The benefits of these exercises really are understated by the modern strength training dogma, and it's tough to convey just how awesome they are when utilized properly. But I think I've laid out a decent case here. If you agree with me, please be sure to like the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and definitely leave me some love in the comments down below. And other than that, if you're interested in my online coaching services, shoot me an email at oncurry.elite at gmail.com and I'd be happy to pass some more info your way. I've still got the one slot left open and then I'll be all booked up for the time being. Keep training hard and I will catch you guys next time.